Hello, how's it going? Um, looks like we're going to be live in now, so that's excellent. All right, so um, great to have you here today at DrupalGov. Um, today we're going to be talking about four uh, case studies and using Drupal for COVID-19 rapid response. So um, these are projects that uh, Annex Digital worked on this year that you know, we're not on our roadmap. We're not projects we ever expected to do, but which uh, which appeared all of a sudden as we were um, as we were working uh, as the pandemic evolved. So uh, we're going to set the scene a little bit for this and and talk about that. Um, but first, I wanted to introduce the speakers for today. Uh, first of all, myself, Christopher Skeen, Principal Consultant, Annex Digital. Also, Kate Hogden, who is our technical lead at Annex, and we're supposed to have Lee, but he's having a little bit of trouble uh, dropping in. So. Um, uh, he may join us later, Lee is the Managing Director. Uh, if not, that's fine, we'll just continue on. But um, if you suddenly see someone new appear, that's Lee. All right, so setting the scene, beginning of the pandemic, nobody's really sure what's going to happen. Um, there's a virus, it's creeping into different parts of the world, people are starting to panic, especially government. And the government's trying to work out, you know, how do we deal with this and uh, and what do we do? Um, you know, and they start preparing for contingencies. Um, they start preparing for all sorts of different contingencies. They're trying to manage it at a local level, but they're thinking, what happens if this is much bigger than we're expecting and what do we do? Um, you know, and that's part of the story here. Um, so they have to create all this new infrastructure, digital infrastructure where none existed. Um, some of it's informational, some of it's about delivering services to people, some of it's just providing data. And there's all sorts of um, back-end services that connect to the digital services, such as uh, call centers and things as well that have to be coordinated and linked together. So there's real coordination challenges with all of this, how all of this happens. Um, things that previously took, you know, two years to procure suddenly have to be set up in, uh, you know, in, in a couple of days, and this creates real headaches for um, for government. You know, how do they do this uh, in a way that you know that works and and is above board and is correct? Um, then you've got all the other things you know about closure of borders, workforce patterns suddenly changing, uh, and also having to communicate all this information not just to your to the people in your country, but those people who are outside the country and those people who don't speak you know English as their first language as well. Um, so we've got four projects we're going to talk about today. Because it's such a short time, we're only going to focus on them briefly. And I noticed Lee has come in. So I'm going to throw over to Lee. Lee's going to talk to you, um, uh, which we call COVID-19 and the border. Awesome. Thanks, Chris. Um, so yeah, COVID and the border. This was a, a really good win for us and for Home Affairs. Um, and uh, the GovCMS platform. So this was a really cool. Um, uh, I guess uh, the first foray into the, the, the start of lockdowns for us. Um, and, you know, the, the problem really was, was that um, as this all was kind of unfolding, the, the Australian government needed to get this information out like as soon as possible. So, you know, in the background, we had content people furiously uh, getting the right information, um, keeping up to date with policy changes and then needing a platform or a place to put all this information. Um, so yeah, anyone anyone who was entering or leaving, as Chris said, um, really needed to know like what was the latest information and where, um, what what do they need to do? And um, yeah. yeah, you got the next one for us, Chris. Yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, so the solution was um, we were working with Pragma Partners, who are an awesome um, user research and strategy agency, um, to I guess design this up, really uh, define an MVP. Um, and then, of course, we got ho got hold of the GovCMS crew, um, and you know, massive shout out to them um, because basically it was pretty much we want to be going live by the next day, um, by the end of the day, with all this with all this new information. So it was just a huge effort from like all three teams really came together to get this done. I think, um, and again, it's the platform um, and the the ease of like where Drupal's enabled us, like the Drupal part was not hard. Everything, it was all the getting the content um, up, getting the platform up and running, and then you know, even the um, even getting uh, URLs and things sorted and stuff. So yeah, so what was really cool, um, by the end of that time, um, enabled by GovCMS and the Drupal platform, uh, content team were able to get in there, publish stuff uh, with a proper content 
publishing workflow. Um, it was all up there within 24 hours, so they met all their obligations. Um, and then even cooler, like at that moment, um, we were hitting peak loads of yeah, 140,000 pages a day, over a million sessions per month. And this became like the start of, um, uh, I suppose, the window for this kind of um, information coming out of Home Affairs and, and the start of all those changes and the, the communications direct, uh, yeah, the, all the communications were coming out from, from this website, which was awesome. Um, and yeah, and again, huge effort to the teams there. And, and I've done the shout out to GovCMS again, but they really pulled out all the stops on to get that one live, which was great. Cool. Thanks, Lee. Um, so right off, off the back of this, we'd, we'd finished one project and all of a sudden we found ourselves doing another one. Um, this one was slightly different. So uh, we talked at the beginning about lockdowns, national lockdowns, and uh, one of the projects we were asked to work on was um, contingency planning for um, this kind of uh, eventuality and you know what sort of digital information needs to be provided. Um, it was a highly reactive and changing environment. So government policy was changing day to day, sometimes hour by hour. Um, and they were trying to establish infrastructure across multiple teams uh, and companies at the same time. And they needed this infrastructure to scale. So um, basically what we're talking about here is a, a, is a portal about, you know, what do you do if you're, uh, you're, you're told that you can't leave your house right across the country, what's gonna happen now? We've seen this in Victoria, okay, but this is kind of, they were thinking, you know, what happens if this if happens everywhere? Um, so this had to scale up to around two to four million users and nobody knew, knew how fast this was gonna happen. So nobody knew whether there was gonna be a lockdown in a week or a month or, or never. It was just not clear at that point. So the, the infrastructure needed to be there. So again, working with Pragma, um, Annex assembled a, an agile team for this. And we built this project, which we're unable to show you, unfortunately, because it hasn't been released publicly. We built this in four days over a weekend in late March. Um, this was not a GovCMS project. Uh, this was a, a, a vanilla Drupal 8 project, but we did really leverage um, the GovCMS project here by using their front end components. So. Um, it was, it was the only way we could get it built in time was to, to utilize those. Um, additionally, Platform SH were hugely instrumental in standing up the infrastructure for this. So uh, we contacted Platform SH on a Thursday and by Friday they had um, fully scalable infrastructure and a team stood up ready to go uh, ahead of contracting. Um, and they did that essentially because of the urgency of the problem. Um, so a big shout out to them too. Um, and then we did a number of integrations as well. We included integration with Service Seeker and various other components. The outcome, what we got out of this was a, as a complete solution for emergency information for the Australian people, which was fully scalable uh, and ready to go in four days, um, which, is, which is super quick. Um, this particular solution is currently scaled down into maintenance mode, but it's still sitting there uh, behind the scenes. Um, in case there's a moment when hopefully um, we don't need it all again. So I, I do, I do uh, trust that none of you will ever have to use this website. Um, that would be the best outcome for everyone. But um, uh, it was a testament to what can be done with Drupal and those GovCMS components uh, in a very short space of time. Um, two out of four. We're going to throw over to Kate now, who's going to talk a little bit about uh, a project we call lovingly SVCR. <laughs> Yeah, um, SVCR, it's a bit of an acronym. It's the Student Visa Condition Relaxation Form. So this is a case study management tool. Um, the problem we had to address here was that there were student, student visa holders within Australia whose expiry dates for their working conditions were approaching and they were stuck in the country. So home, uh, the department had to provide some assurance to, to their employers and to these workers um, that they weren't going to, um, they weren't going to be um, in trouble for sort of staying. And they were also quite often involved in um, industries that were important for the support um, while everyone was in lockdown. So aged care, um, supply chains for supermarkets, so all critical industry support. Um, so this had to be up and running within a few days because announcements had been made about the policies um, and that people would be able to apply for this relaxation. Um, 
as we were preparing to deliver this on platform.sh, the department were already capturing the information and capturing requests through two other systems, which were then being manually processed very slowly and the workload was piling up for the team at Home Affairs. Um, this workload was heavily email based. Um, certificates had to be created manually and then sent back. And this really slowed the team down because they were unable to have a lot of concurrent staff working on this and processing these applications. And it was also difficult for them to track which types of applications were coming in and what state they were in in their processing. So what did we do with this? We turned to Drupal and we utilised Webform quite heavily to manage those conditions to create several variations of the types of applications that could be submitted and then built in the workflow management, which allowed the team to work concurrently uh, to vet these applications and to provide the information back to, this, uh, to the employers of these student visa holders. Um, we also used Entity Print as the department needed to provide the, uh, the, the acknowledgement back through PDF rather than just through like a thank you on screen kind of situation. Um, rules Webform was really helpful for us to set up those conditionals. Uh, and as the policies kept changing, depending on uh, the applications and what the minister was preparing to announce in conjunction with their own legal team and their policy teams. So we had to adapt pretty quickly to add new situations. Um, we had some in place uh, reporting so that the team could readily see the status of the applications and how many had to be processed. And we were able to import data from other systems and clean that up so that they had an overall picture and they could report each day or several times throughout the day to see how those applications were tracking. And they could also monitor the types of applications that were coming in. And of course, then we could apply data validation to that as well so that the uh, information was more consistent. Uh, this allowed that team to change from a backlog which was piling up days and days of work to being able to process hundreds of applications within a few hours. So I think that was a pretty good outcome for them. Uh, and this site's currently also no longer necessary. We could re-enliven it and we could readily build into that uh, case study management tool. Um, but again, hopefully we won't need to. Thanks, Case. Um, so finally, uh, the last site we want to talk to you about is, is probably the one I think we're most proud of here at, at Annex, um, uh, and it's known as uh, COVID in language. Um, so COVID in language is uh, the government's solution to um, dealing with uh, information for visa holders and other people who need information about COVID, um, who are stuck in Australia or, or here and, and don't speak good English. Um, in terms of, of publishing a lot of um, information in, in as many languages as possible, as fast as possible. So this was originally built as a front-end capability for a uh, GovCMS site that we talked about at the beginning, but in the end, um, Department of Home Affairs uh, decided to expand this into its own um, solution. Um, Thankfully, Drupal 8 really came to the party here with its multilingual capability and the ability to translate English content automatically using the Google Translate API. So the combination of the excellent um, multilingual tools and the automatic translation has allowed the department to maintain, actively maintain over 65 uh, languages on this website. Um, Again, it uses a modified GovCMS uh, theme, so we're still leveraging that GovCMS content, but uh, hosted on Platform SH. Um, and we have some other partners on this one as well. Pragma did all the uh, UX for it, and um, uh, just after midnight, who you might see around the events, provide 24-7 support for that project too. So a real team effort to deliver that project that really shows the strength of, of multilingual and I encourage you to go and check it out. Um, so the outcomes here are great. Home Affairs can instantly publish English content and translate it with the click of the button. It's queued, um, it's, uh, 
uh, translates automatically. They don't have to have translators on hand. Um, they no longer need to publish a whole lot of PDF files. Um, so it's all fully indexed as well. Um, and this site um, is currently the first link on australia.gov.au. So it gets over 200,000 sessions per month, which is, is pretty good. Um, there were some gotchas with this site with using multilingual. Um, it's important to understand that not all parts of Drupal actually work properly with multilingual yet. So there are there are issues where uh, if you're passing data through views, you can end up translating HTML and things. Um, so there are a few gotchas to look for when you're doing that, but but otherwise it does work pretty seamlessly. And I'd, I'd say we're pretty happy with it. All right, so um, I'm just gonna hand over to Lee. Lee's gonna just summarize and uh, talk about some of the things we learned uh, on these four projects. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Chris. Yeah, that um, translating of HTML into, into a language was my favorite bug of the year, I think. Uh, that was a good one. Um, yeah, so for, for us, like, why was Drupal the best choice here? Uh, it was a real no-brainer for us. Um, you know, tell me an enterprise-level CMS that can do that that quickly and get to market that fast. Um, you know, it's flexible. We can use it for content or as an application. Um, as Kate outlined, you know, we were using it for case management um, and it worked like a charm. Um, um, and then the government support, having the backing of government community makes the, makes it possible to work quickly. Um, as, as I was saying about the... the the, the quick response from the GovCMS team to get the um, COVID in the border site live. Um, so the other stuff uh, that we learned was really that having good, strong partnerships can make or break the project. Um, you know, getting them deployed, getting deployed and getting them into production straight away is like the critical part. Um, so, you know, I think everyone's done a, you know, turned around a turn around a website in 24 hours or, or, or some version of that in their career. But, you know, um, getting it to the quicker you can get your your project into a production like state um, just means you can get the green light and get everything done on time. So there's no like waiting until the, the 24th hour essentially to like, should we do it? We, you know, we want to be ready and deploy, deployable like within hours if, if possible. Um, so uh, the, other, the other part there was, um, you know, the, those ready to go components, as Chris touched on, um, that was, we leveraged that really well. So we weren't reinventing the wheel. Um, we were just really getting to like what's important and that's the message and the content and keeping the uh, the end user in focus. Um, know when GovCMS is a good fit. So obviously we used it on some occasions, we used parts of it on others um, and then uh, used our other partners for like platform uh, for some other more complicated ones. Um, and then translation is great in Drupal 8, but uh, yeah, there's a bunch of quirks and that thing about views, like I said, my favorite bug uh, for this year. Um, with the, rap uh, the rapid publishing environment, onboarding content teams uh, is harder. So uh, that was just one of those things. Uh, uh, I think it's enabled well by Drupal, but um, you know, things, to, things that we learned. Next one. Uh, yeah, and massive shout out. I think we've already done a good shout out, but massive shout out to our partners. Pragma partners were um, amazing in this um, and led the way. Platform SH, um, really quick um, and responded fast. Same with the GovCMS team, which was like a massive win for that, for how quick we were able to get that up. And again, just, just after midnight, who are a key partner of ours and, and continue to be so and, and continue to support these websites with us. Cool. Thanks so Thanks. much. I know we've got a minute left and I just spotted a couple of questions in the chat. Um, uh, Govind asked, is it all API based translation? Um, Kate, do you have an answer for that one? Uh, yeah, so we're using Google Translate. Um, there is some manual translation used in the, that site too. So critical content was identified as needing to be translated um, by professional services. Um, so you can probably appreciate how important it is not to mix up information in certain cases and then the rest of it, yes, all running through Google Translate. And a question from Jennifer, how perfect did the sites have to be before you went live or were they up and iterating on the fly? Um, so I think I can probably answer that one. Um, they, they had to be surprisingly perfect, actually. <laughs> um, we really were launching these sites with as, you know, with as few bugs as possible. Um, the, the good thing was, uh, with the current state of play with Drupal and GovCMS components, there are very few um, 
very few places for, for, for bugs and errors to creep in. Most of the front end works. Um, and just generally speaking, you know, it's it's not a big issue. So that, that went fairly well. Um, so thank you all for coming. Um, it looks like we've run over our time, so I'm going to wrap it up there. Um, hope to see you at the rest of the event. Yeah, jump into our virtual booth if you want to talk more about those. We're happy to chat. Absolutely. Yep. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.